I'm a professor here at Kansas University. I am in the Film and Media Studies department. And this year, I've been teaching in a bulletproof vest. What does that do for us? What does that do for us? It raises the stakes. It raises the stakes. You've got to raise the stakes once you say. as a protest against that policy. For this last few months, you know, we've been having meetings on campus about the policy, instructing us about the policy, and there was a Muslim professor that was sitting next to me, just happened to be sitting next to me, and, and, uh, and she was just frightened to death. She talked about how it affects free speech and how it'll affect free speech in her class, and that she'll have to self-censor herself now f because of fear. It gives you a little more obligation to kind of say what I think a lot of people are, are thinking. The education that we can share to students, you know, we want to share that in, in the best means possible, in the best ways possible. But then there's this other obligation I think we have to teach integrity, to teach citizenship, to teach community, you know, getting to know the student and the student getting to know the professor. And, and that's one of the beauties of, of, of college life. You move toward relationship. And in some ways, I feel that this policy is, is detrimental to that. You know, I teach classes that deal with race, that deal with stereotypes, deal with, you know, the volatile parts of our American history. And, and certainly the way I operate, I operate in a real fl free flow of ideas. And, and I think that education is, is best taught that way. And now this, this other element has been inserted in that and it, and it just ruins that trust. The hospital will, the church. Part of the problem with the policy is that the, the weapons have to be concealed. It kind of says, nothing here to look at, nothing to be worried about. But the reality is, people are, are gun, have guns on them. If they, were, if they were walking around with guns on their hips, like in the old, the old West, you would, you would automatically you know, respond to that, and you would be affected by it. And the other people in the community would be affected by it. And they would not look at those students in the same way. And then there's the rule that says those guns have to be un unloaded. Well, but there's no, just nobody to check that rule. Well, I, can, I can't ask the student, is your gun unloaded? Are you meeting the regulations of the policy? I can't ask a student, I can't even ask them if they have a gun. So the vest kind of makes the invisible visible. It says, no, this is really what's going on here. And, and, you, and if, if you may be lulled to sleep by this fact that you don't see the gun, but the guns are all around us. All you can do is create the environment for change. I understand the world of America. Virginia Tech was a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, but how do you respond to that? Do you respond by arming everybody and saying, we gotta be ready on the alert all the time? That's really what the policy is saying. I would love to see every professor on campus wearing a bulletproof vest. I'd love to see students wearing bulletproof vests. I think, you know, it's the same as if you're walking around with guns. If everybody was walking around with vests, then the only conclusion the outsider has when they see this is this must be a war zone. But today, you are the law. Do you notice how also- Now, I'm not wearing the vest out of fear. 
I'm wearing the vest out of protest. I trust my students. Uh, I, you know, I trust people. I think if you're gonna be a free citizen in, in, in American life, you have to trust. As a whole, you, you don't walk around in fear and, and distrust. You have, to, you have to trust everyone. And that's what we should be teaching here. This guy here, who I just freaking love this guy right here. I love his ass. I mean, this is my main man. I love this cat. Me and him, we hang out non-damn stop. And I love his ass. If he died, I just want to die with him. That's how much I love him. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's that's the thing. It's like, it's like, this is the worst nightmare you can have. If he's gonna have a nightmare, it has to be worthy of nightmares. If he's gonna have PTSD, it's got to be specific because the more specific you make it,